Hi guys, what I've just introduced you to is a um, sequence of 241 beads and um, it's a necklace that I've been making and um, it's been quite a journey, uh, a lot of thought, uh, transition and um, production of some very interesting beads that I was inspired by um, over a year ago. It's taken me a year to get them around to making it. The beads, that, um, the beads that we're talking about were discovered in a cave in Les Ys in France. And uh, what's special about them is they're tiny little beads with a rebate in the middle. So when they meet together, they cross over. The other thing that was important about them, they were coated in red ochre and uh, this was quite a um, spiritual practice so I believe. So I didn't know how long it was going to take or how many beads it was going to take to go completely go around my neck and on the journey I found myself trying to skip um, and dodge uh, the effort that was going to need to go into it by changing what would happen as I got beyond halfway. But the necklace kind of got a voice of its own and it wouldn't let me. I've been making it out of red deer antler, um, woolly mammoth tusk and, um, and red deer leg bone. So what I've got is I've got a transition of uh, grades of colour going on. Um, I've got two beads left to make and um, I've, it brings me to the story of actually what could potentially have been going on with this particular necklace. There's an awful lot of effort that goes in. I'm about to get started. I'm making two beads out of red deer antler. And I'm gonna be using um, flint, a big chunk of flint. I'm gonna use this like a little blade core, make some burrins. And I would imagine that for the next hour or more, I'm gonna be cut, cutting some grooves, releasing um, a rod of antler, um, rounding it up, putting a depression in, drill a little hole and sawing them off to add to the last two beads. Now that's a lot of work. So if you think of 241, um, you can probably, uh, the production time probably wouldn't be massive, but um, that's a lot when you combine it all together. So what were they about? Was it a necklace made as a gift for a lover? Or did it represent all the people that were in that community and served from that particular cave and lived around that area? So I'm going with the theory that it's a combination of both. That each bead represents somebody from that tribe. And um, so, I've added a few special beads into ochre at the back there. One's for my son, and one's for my mother, who's passed, and one's for my dad, because he's the reason that I'm going on this journey. And um, there's a bead going on there for myself, and there's a bead going on there for my woman, who's yet to come into my life, but she'll be there. Um, and I just think that that's quite a splendid journey to have gone on so I'm gonna carry on and I'll show you some short clips of the production of the beads as I move for further forward get them last two beads into the ochre onto the back of that necklace and um, then that will be going on these beads are over 22,000 years old incidentally, or the ones that I'm reproducing. They were come from the Cro-Magnum period, from the Magdalenian culture. So, what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna use this end as a little blade core.
that's perfect right so we've got a nice little straight crested blade and we'll uh, just take all the sharp edges off of that and run that down to a nice point make it comfortable to hold at the back So what we've got is we've got that. Now that needs adjusting. And the adjustment that's going to happen is you're just going to pop that on the hands and turn it on its side like so. And then what we'll do is we'll just push a flake off that way and a flake off that way. Now what you've got, if you look, you've got this little bit which is flat on either side so that makes that a lot stronger and um, we might need to retouch that several times along the way and um, we'll start off by looking at this antler there's obviously a lot of tools that I could take from this but if we look along here we've got natural channels so I can explore the natural channels and use them as my in my favour. So I'm visualising coming along here, then I, that'll give me a triangle groove. Then jumping over, and getting another triangle groove next to it, cross cutting, and levering that out. So you can see at the bottom of them, what we've done is we've met that corky material. So I reckon I can cross cut that. It took me a while to understand these little saws. I used to try and use them gently to defend the teeth. Then I realized that actually they work slightly differently to that. What's, what's left on there the teeth are pretty much gone, but there's still a bumpy terrain. And because it's obviously harder than that, you can use that with plenty of force and, um, and cut down quite quickly. So I'm going to try and get an antler wedge and then hammer that out. So far so good then. Uh, that's the antler wedge that I'm going to use. And... Um, We'll just see if we can start releasing that. Hey, we've got some movement. Hurrah! We got it. <laughs> so it's time to round that up. Couldn't have a better tool for the job. And now what we'll do is we'll just use this abrasion on this stone to round up this end. Um, it could be that I could get an angulation on a stone and start grinding that in as well. There's be different methods that we could employ here. Right, so that's beginning to uh, show itself quite nicely cammed. And the next part is to drill a hole. Here what we have is a drill that I've made up. A um, little hazel shaft and a flint tip made the same way as a burin. And to connect them two things together, what I've done is I've taken a turkey feather and cut the front off and slid that onto the wood. Then I've pulled some pine pitch in 
and slipped the tip into that. And then I've just used a nettle to bind, give it a little bit more construction. So I'm going to put some teeth on that and then saw that off. So that little drill took a bit of a beating um, and uh, but we're, thro we're through there look and I should just be able to <laughs> we have one one little cammed bead. Just gives that a bit of abrasion up here. Look. And in the red ochre it goes. So, what I have here guys is 241 handmade beads inspired by cave in Lazise in France 12,000 sorry 22,000 years old that's been quite a journey um, a spiritual journey a mind opening journey and um, it's held me quite um, yeah <laughs> and it's going to continue to hold me and uh, I'm going to be sharing journeys like that with you guys and um, thanks for watching and you know what for you youtubers hit the subscribe button cheers take care